Hi guys, in this video we're going to see how to track markers on the actor's face. We're going to do that by using the track application. Let's start with loading an HMC sequence. We will need to track markers on both the top and the bottom views. Let's start with the top view. As a first step, we can cache this sequence for faster playback. If the default amount of cache is not enough to store the entire sequence, we can increase it using this parameter. Let's increase it to 10 gigabytes and cache the sequence again. All right, this is the video we need to track. It contains a series of fax expressions. Tracking these kinds of sequences is particularly challenging. I recommend starting the tracking with a neutral frame. In this case, it's going to be the last frame of our sequence. First, we need to create a set of markers to track. It's important to use the same marker names as we specified on our daily scan. Let me show you the marker labeling project we created previously. One way to create markers in track is to manually select them with the same names. We can switch to the track tab, set a corresponding name for the group of markers, for example, nose, click the create marker button and start selecting markers. But this process requires a lot of time and attention. You need to make sure you don't confuse marker names and don't miss any markers. We will use a faster approach instead. Since we have all the markers selected in 3D, and we also have a calibrated camera, we can compute the 2D positions of the markers in the camera view using a points to screen points node. First, let's create a load camera node. I'm going to load the JSON file for our top camera that we created during the calibration step earlier. Now we need to translate the face into the camera space. Let's bring in the transformation that we computed during the neutral face to camera alignment step. For this, I create a load transform node. Here is the file with a transformation from the daily scan to the camera space. I'm going to apply this transformation to our neutral model. Now we can use a points to screen points node. The first input is going to be our mesh in the camera space. The second input is the set of markers. The last input is our camera. Let's save the resulting points into a file. I'm going to call this file topscreenmarkers.json. Now if we return to track, we can click Import and load the points that we've just saved. The dialog says that Track can't define the frame number to apply these markers to. Let's click Yes to import it into the current frame. All the markers have now been loaded. Let's enlarge the markers search window. I'm going to select all of them using Ctrl A. Then I click the Scale button. Let's double the scale to 120. Let's also click Align to Center and then click OK. Now let's go to the Preferences dialog. We can go to the Markers section and turn off the Show Pattern and Search Boxes option. You can also do that by clicking the X hotkey. From the top menu, let's go to View and click Show Cycles. When this option is active, the markers with the same base name are automatically connected with the lines which makes it much easier to distinguish them. As you may see, the initial marker positions are a bit off because the neutral 3D model doesn't exactly match the neutral face shape in the HMC. We will need to manually adjust the marker position, but still it's much faster than creating all the markers from scratch and assigning them proper names. We can simply drag and drop every marker to a proper position. For the sake of time, please allow me to pause the recording and come back to you when it's ready. 
All right, we're back. With this done, we can start tracking. For example, let's start with the nose markers. I'm going to click track backward to start the tracking. As you may see, the tracking was done completely automatically. Let's return to the last frame and track another set of points. This time, let's track the nasolabial markers. Let's click track backward again and see how it works. The entire sequence was tracked correctly, except for this marker. Let's scroll the timeline and find the exact frame where the tracking failed. Let's fix the marker position in this particular frame. Now we can click track backward again just for this marker. All right, finally, let's examine a complex case in which markers are occluded. The gym markers are one such example. Before tracking, I recommend looking through the sequence to find the frames where any of the markers in our current mark set is occluded. Here's an example. I need to create a keyframe for the marker positions at the very moment before the markers disappear. Then I find a place where the markers are visible again, and I make another keyframe. Let me scroll through the sequence to find other occlusions. It takes time, but it's much faster than detecting problems during the tracking. Okay. With this done, we can go back to the last frame and click Track Backward. When the tracking reaches a keyframe, it stops. We know that the next section is not trackable, so we simply skip it and switch to the next keyframe. Then we continue tracking from there. We can continue this process until we have tracked the entire range. For the sake of time, let me pause the video and come back to you when all the markers on the face have been tracked. OK, that's done. Here's the final result. The last step is to save the track markers for later use. Let's select all the markers and click Export. I'm going to create a folder called Tracking, and inside that, let's create a subfolder called Top, and save the results there. We can use the same approach to track the markers for the bottom camera. The track markers for the top and the bottom cameras will be used later for the image-based wrapping step. That's it for this tutorial. See you in the next video.